How are you, Carol? Ruby, I'm so happy that you're my interviewer. <laughs> I am. I'm not kidding. I don't think well, I wanted, I wanted to say I love your sweater. I don't know. Oh, mine? Yeah. Or Steve's? E both. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. I love that poster in back of you. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> Um, well, I kind of want to just start off with some basic questions just to set off the interview. Um, so I was wondering how long um, have you been living in Vermont? Oh, since, well, we've had our house here since 1984. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's a famous year. Well, we weren't living here then. We were, we've come up for a week or two weeks or a month even whenever we could mm -hmm. and we the kids would be skiing and carrying on and oh my god <laughs> and our grandchildren thought that was this was their house <laughs> and at any rate we we came here permanently in 2004 mm -hmm. so and was that around are. the time um you became uh vermonters oh uh, yeah and a member of jacobs oh that was way back Oh, mm -hmm. way back before we came here permanently. One day we were at Jake at um, a Green Mountain Inn having dinner, I guess, and we saw a sign that said services, Jewish services. I don't remember the sign. Mm -hmm. And and we looked at each other and so said we didn't know there were Jewish people here. <laughs> us. And uh, so we went and we fell in love with everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of Jay Cox before they had a building, before anything. Mm -hmm. It was just the very beginning. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and I do see that, um, I know that you're very involved with Jay Cox. You've definitely taken on some. Jay Cox is involved with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Well, we, we are, in, we, we love Jay Cox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just wish I could do more, but you mm -hmm. know. But at any rate, go ahead. <laughs> um, and I was just wondering how being so connected to the Jewish community and to Jacogs, how that um, might make you resilient in a way. I've always been Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of being anything else. Um, I think my resilience comes from my background as a child. I had a wonderful, loving childhood. Now, all kinds of things went on, but we all loved each other. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a group that who started kindergarten, went all the way up through to high school, wow. all the same children. And there were maybe four of us who weren't Jewish. We never even thought about it. They were our friends, you know, it just, uh, we were all together. Uh, when, when we were gonna sing Christmas carols, I was the only Jewish kid that stayed because <laughs> I love to sing Christmas <laughs> carols. But anyway, when I was beginning my first semester in college, I was 17, I was a little young. <laughs> My movie star, handsome and multi-talented brother was killed in the Korean War. And that started me off on uh, several years of probably PTSD, but mm -hmm. you know. And after about two years of being out of it, I guess you would say, I started therapy. And that helped me to come back to myself. Mm -hmm. And um, the pain of such a loss doesn't go away. It just hides very deep in your heart so you can continue your life. I'll read you a poem that I wrote. I, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. In the, it's called Evolution Two. In the study of the evolution of man, Scientists tell us that it all began when Mother Nature, already wise and old, helped the jellyfish to become quite bold. 
The creature grew legs and crawled up out of the slime one rosy dawn when the earth was in its prime. So from the depths of a sea of pain and fear have you helped me to triumphantly reappear. I floated and drifted and then sprinted for the shore where I stood up reunited with my abandoned self once more. I now walk strong and certain in the forest of my life. My heart sings out with promise, though yet around us there is strife. There's a, the legend of our journey is a shining silver chain, which I wear as a memento of the dragons we have slain. So here's a toast to Mother Nature and all that she has done and bouquets to you and me, dear friend, for the battles we have won. Mm. Wow. So there you go. That's the first thing. Wow. And a few years later, I met the man I was going to marry, mm. Steve F. Stephen F. Lichtenstein. And we fell madly in love. I don't know why he fell in love with me, but I fell madly in love. <laughs> and we were so happy together that the joy of our love really overshadowed my sadness. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read you one more poem, and that's it. I promise. <laughs> All right? <laughs> All right. It's called A Fairy Tale based on a true story. A long time ago, once upon a time, we said hello. I was the shy young girl with the broken heart, and you were the sweet young man with the golden soul. Your tender touch nourished my wounded spirit, and magical kisses from your unforgettable lips eased the pen painful scars. You, my knight in shining armor, cherished me with your adoring eyes and comforted me with the music of your gentle voice. Was any fairy tale princess ever loved so perfectly? You healed my heart and it swelled with the joy of our love and one and one became one and then more, lots more. Wow. That's the story of us. You are a very talented poet, I will say that. Uh, oh, you're a very talented poet. And I'm also half deaf, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, good. You have some. Water. On the 25th of October this month, I'm starting a poetry club. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh Whoever wants to join. They can write poems or bring any poem that they just happen to read that mm -hmm. and we will read it and talk about it. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Is it through Jacob? Yeah. Cool. So um, anyway. Oh we well, I yeah, should we bring it back. Oh I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. Um we should bring it back to like the um yeah. topic. Um but um, <laughs> so in finding Steve, um, who is now your husband, um, did you, was he um, definitely um, a big part of your healing process and of you oh. becoming resilient towards the loss of your brother? He, as I said, that loss, that pain doesn't go away, but it hides. Mm -hmm. And you go on with your life and Steve brought me into the real world. I became a real person again. And we were married. We had four, well, they happened to be wonderful children. Not that I say so, but they are. <laughs> and by acclamation. We're, very cher we're very blessed. <clears throat> and I worked for this, for this synagogue that we belonged to then. I did Meals on Wheels, kosher meals, and 
I belonged to the choir because I loved to sing. Mm -hmm. I forget what else I did, but I, and yes, Holly said we're married wow. for 62 years, but we know each other 64 years. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh, when our youngest child was in school all day, I went to, <laughs> Uh, back to school to get my master's in counseling therapy. Mm -hmm. And I worked as an intern for the testing and counseling center. And they liked my work and they asked me to join them to, to work for them. And I did for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Helped undergrads, grads, married couples. I'm very proud of the work we did at that testing and counseling center. And uh, it was it was very good. I mm -hmm. I think. So. Um, and as you said before, how you um, went to therapy um, to kind of help you, um, did that kind of make you want to? Did part of going to therapy make you realize um, how passionate you were about? Uh, psychology and maybe make you want to go back to school? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my experience with that made me realize I could help other people who mm -hmm. suffered like I did. Yeah. There's nothing more wonderful. Well, there are things more wonderful, but that is a wonderful thing mm -hmm. to be able to do. Um, and I was also wondering, um, or disregarding the definition of resilience, what do you personally think of when you think about being resilient? I think that you just have to do the best you can in every situation. Mm -hmm. And things that come up that are painful or, or, or difficult, you just, again, I, I always say that, just do the best you can. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think I can really say anything else. Yeah. I would um, Kind of bringing it back to the present day, um, once uh, the, once COVID-19, well, once everything, once the world kind of went into a little um, shutdown, I guess you could say, um, what things would you do? Did you have any things that you would do um, to kind of help you wrap your head around um, what was happening in the situation of like going into quarantine and everything? I get up in the morning and I do all the things I have to do. And it's midnight in five minutes. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't, I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I am 85 years old. I've been out and around. So I'm in, so big mm -hmm. deal. So we're in. Our mm -hmm. kids won't let us go out. <laughs> <laughs> they, they bring us groceries, they visit us, they fix things or whatever, you know, it just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, what can I tell you? We're blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure if I answered your question. Oh, no, that, that was perfect. <laughs> what else? Oh, I die in the background. <laughs> oh. Um, I was also wondering if um, you founded any of the um, programs in JCOG, in JCOGs, through JCOGs, because I know I what? If I founded any of the programs, because I know you're going to do that poetry. Um, well, I, I'm the chairman of the arts and, used to be arts and education, arts and entertainment. Wow. So we used to do some nice things, but it's kind of difficult now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, I, I'm, I'm going to do a book club that, that's start, probably starting in November, yeah. starting that. Mm -hmm. And um, something else I was, I'm, I'm going to try to get a concert 
at least one. <laughs> you know, I miss that. I they, oh, I they, somebody said, the Beth said, the Yiddish club is, so our second meeting is on Sunday at 11 at, um, I'm sorry, four o'clock, Sunday the 11th, this Sunday. We have our Yiddish club again. And I have all the lyrics to six Yiddish songs that would, and, and the music and my, my girlfriend, my, my sweetheart daughter has all the music and we're going to sing along with them. Oh, the music. Wow. Yes. Hmm. So, what else? Well, hmm. oh, I marched for, I marched for civil rights. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you yeah. about You are? Yeah, yeah. Um, a hundred years ago, honestly, it was before <laughs> I even met Steve. And then many years later, I remember marching for a uh, protesting against Vietnam. Mm. That was another thing. I, I don't remember much about it except it was beaches in Central Park. I don't mm -hmm. know. But, you know, I felt. And I still feel very strongly about all of that. Um, well, what inspired you to um, march for that cause? Well, I don't think you have to be inspired to want to march for civil rights. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. I, I just always felt that was very important to have mm -hmm. everybody should have the rights, be, should be equally respected and, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and Vietnam, I'm, I guess I'm, what, what prompted me to, I guess was my brother in the war mm -hmm. about Vietnam, mm -hmm. not wanting to, hear about other children being killed. He was only 22 years old, mm -hmm. which to you is old. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, I was also wondering how um, Jewish, your, you being Jewish defines you and how big of, um, how much your religion means to you. I'm nothing if I'm not Jewish. Mm -hmm. uh, everything. I I don't even know how to answer that question. This is just... What do you What do you love about being Jewish? What are your What are your favorite What are your favorite values? What are your favorite foods? What are, tell us all Tell us about it. Oh, the foods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I love the foods. I had a fabulous grandmother who came over when she was a little girl <laughs> and she had a, a, a baby brother who had a sore throat on the ship and she grabbed a hot potato and stuffed it down his throat and he got better. So <laughs> that taught me <laughs> that you always have to eat something hot when you have a sore throat. Mm -hmm. That I don't know if that's not answering. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know. I just, I never think about it. I just mm -hmm. always, everything about being Jewish is wonderful to me. The, the, the value system, mm -hmm. the food of my, <laughs> of course, the food, mm -hmm. and and I love the music. Mm -hmm. I love the prayers. It's everything. Holly, Holly's saying it's everything. Both of my parents, they're both good Jews. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and good brisket, she says. <laughs> I'm a good brisket maker. Mm. <laughs> I cook like my mother and my grandmother. 
Mm. You know, there were other things that, of course, if you're 85, you're going to have a lot of things that you have to be resilient about if you want to keep living your life. I mean, I, we lost, uh, both of us, we lost our mothers, our fathers, um, and all kinds of other things happened, which I can't remember. <laughs> and the world. I don't want to start talking about that. I'll go crazy. <laughs> the way the world is now. Yeah. Uh, our country, especially. Can I can I jump in and just say, wow. <laughs> you know, and ask a question here? Um, you know, you you you've you've seen the world in various states uh, across your many years. You mentioned civil rights. You mentioned Vietnam. Um, and you know, so you you've seen you've seen America, you've seen the greater world go through many difficult times, um, and now here we are faced with this difficult time. And I wonder what lessons from the past, you know, what you know, having gone through difficult times, for those of us who are, are abyssal younger, like me and Ruby, um, you know, how what are the lessons of those? hard times in the past that we can that you can teach us to draw on in this time you can't keep quiet if you see horrible things going on you've got to open your big mouth and yell mm -hmm. and shout and march and i'm a little old to be carrying a post but you know a stick <laughs> But I mean, you guys can. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody said. Oh, Amy Wenger. <laughs> you, you just can't keep quiet because it's not going to go away on its own if you mm -hmm. see things that are wrong in this world. And vote, says Ed Kirsch. Yes, we all have to vote. We voted and we brought our votes into the clerk already or absent whatever the early voting mm -hmm. so i'm happy about that our son brought them in for us uh, but that's that's i guess that's the answer to your question i hope it is mm -hmm. i mean i hope it's an answer <laughs> we have well it wasn't even your question it was rather yeah it was rather but Ruby, do you have any last question for Carol? Um, well, I, before this, I, I had a bunch of questions and I lost that. Oh. So I kind of just had to last minute jot stuff down. But, um, um, well, I just think um, that you've definitely, um, been through some challenging times in your life and um you have been resilient through those times and um i just think that it what you said about having your verse your voice heard and for speaking out um is definitely very important um especially during these times <laughs> um but yeah, um, I don't really have any last questions. That's all good. But yeah. I can tell you one last thing about resilience. There's another way of being resilient. <laughs> I have four different things wrong with me physically, you know. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, up there. <laughs> and I make believe there's nothing wrong. And that's how I'm resilient about that. Mm -hmm. I just pretend. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I take all my medicine. Well, um, thank you so much for um, having me interview you. <laughs> thank you so much for you being You gave some really great home. answers and um, you're a very insightful person and very well spoken. So. And so are you. So <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs>
I hope to see you again soon. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I definitely want to meet you in person if that ever becomes a possibility. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We Skype with our children. We have, a le how many children do we have? I forgot. <laughs> we, have, we have, including in-law sons, we have seven children. And including two in-laws, grandson-in-laws, we have 11 grandchildren. Wow. And in November, God willing, we are expecting our second great-grandchild. <laughs> wow. How do you like them? How do you like that? <laughs> Thank, you. Uh, Thank you, Ruby. Carol, Ruby, this is, this is, I, my expectations were very high because uh, I knew this would be wonderful and they were far exceeded. Uh, oh, wow. even, even that. It's um, like first drink. <laughs> uh, you, you two are amazing. Ruby, you did a, a, a superb job of, yeah. of asking questions and interviewing and just being insightful and thoughtful and, and listening. Uh, with attentive ears, um, you you're a wonderful wow. person. We're so grateful to have you in our community. Uh, you and your mom and Igor uh, <laughs> together, uh, and uh, and and Carol uh, with your with your main squeeze, Steve with you. Oh uh, we uh, the the two of you are just such. <laughs> such important parts of this community i cannot like there are not words to describe mm -hmm. so i and and your answers and your thoughts and wisdom was uh, uh and I, I just have to tell you one thing when i was a child growing up all those other all our friends called me giggles my giggles goldstein that was my <laughs> i forgot to tell you that. That's amazing <laughs> Amazing. And well, I still am a giggler. <laughs> what did she say? I, she's still a giggler. But that's resilience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 